Right, to the business at hand. Um, over my career journey in 25 years in this industry, um, I've really been lucky enough to have had a lot of roles in the Marcoms world, so everything from an event director through to being a creative, a strategist, um, and of course all the client services roles that we've all been through. Um, I've got to say, from my perspective probably, and I'm sure for you guys, I think account management is probably the most important role in the business from two perspectives, and that is, is about building relationships and delivering for your clients and for the business. I really think it's so important. Um, sorry, page two. To me, it's also the hardest and most stressful role. Uh, I think it's always a battle because you are really stuck in the middle the whole way through. You're, you're either battling the creative director against the client or vice versa. Um, you're either in the sandwich between the, the CFO and the accountant and your client again, and you're constantly juggling balls and spinning plates. I had to get that right. Um, you know, there's just so much going on around stakeholders and people that you have to talk to on a, on a daily basis to get things done. It's just such a hard role. And I think because of that battle, you're also in a really lonely place sometimes. And I think it's really hard because you don't have anyone to talk to because, you know, you can't talk to the creative director because he's probably got a grudge against you. You obviously can't talk to your client. Your CFO just wants the money. So it's just a constant battle and you're quite alone. And I think part of the things that Sarah talks about in her book is that is helping around that journey and, you know, your own personal development. Despite it being such an important thing, I've been really surprised on my journey in personal development and career development. On, and I've been on so many courses, I've read lots of books, but I was, until today, um, really unable to find a book uh, dedicated to account management, or a course, if I'm honest, and, I, and I'm you know, really proud of Sarah of what she's done to bring this to the table. Um, what else have I got here? Pardon me. So I guess Sarah came to me a couple of years ago and sort of said, look, I'm going to think about this book, uh, I want to do some, some courses, and I've got to say I was just really inspired, A, by her, her drive and her brains, but simply because I just saw the opportunity uh, really for her to talk to the industry, talk to young people and old people around what is account management and what are the tools needed. So me personally, you know, I'm just so glad. Thank you from, from the industry, for me, for all the work you've done, um, and over to you. Very, very long, or a much longer journey than I ever thought it was going to be. Um, we definitely got there, and it's so lovely to see you all here tonight because it's very, very special to have um, have you gathered together for this book, you know, which has been a big part of my life over the last couple of years. I definitely want to say thank you for Mark. He literally got a panicked phone call yesterday going, Ha, ah, can you please step in? So, very truly appreciate that, um, which is great. Catherine, um, <clears throat> It, it's a shame that Catherine couldn't be here tonight and, and say a few words because Catherine wasn't on the book journey with me. I've only known Catherine a really short time. <clears throat> but what, the reason I asked her to speak tonight originally was um, I just loved her passion for the industry and for account managers and her team and that kind of thing. And along my journey of talking to people and interviewing people, there have been a few of those kind of lovely people that I've come up oh my gosh, you're just so awesome and your heart's really in the industry and Catherine was one of those people. So um, it is a shame she couldn't be here tonight. She definitely um, passes on her apologies. But so many thanks to Mark because he's another one whose passion is for the industry and his heart is for the team and, and it's great and it's inspiring for me and I'm able to put that sort of inspiration into the book that you've seen. So that's, that's been great. Um, so I thought I'd just say a few thank yous about tonight, about putting the um, event on tonight, I'll talk a little bit about the book and, um, and the journey of the book. But um, first, first off, um, it, it, it is a big book, right? And there's been a lot of people involved along that way. There's a lot of content in the book. But if you're getting the book and you're reading it, and I've left, it, if, if I've left something out, can you let me know? Because I think I've got everything, but I'm not quite sure. So just keep that in mind. But look, thank you to all for coming out tonight for everyone here. Um, the way I look at people that sort of come in and out of my life, it's like weaving a tapestry of a picture and you're all threads as part of that journey. And I know most of you that are sitting standing here, not all of you, and I, the ones I don't I hope to get to know, 
but every person that comes across my life, whether it's personally or in a career, you've all become part of that book in some measure, right? So, and I thank you for having that input and the people I've worked with, the people I've observed. So that's, that's really awesome and a lot of you guys fall into that category. So thank you so much for sharing this um, with me. Um, <clears throat> some of you here have had more of a direct input into the book than others and along the journey, and I'll uh, explain a little bit more later, um, I interviewed a lot of people and some of those people are here tonight. I'm not going to try and list the thank yous for you because I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody out, out that you know who you are. And at the back of the book there's a, a list of all the people that were involved in some measure. So thank you very much. And some of the people here, um, there's, they're, they're, they're quoted all the way through the book. So, um, you know, it's been a really important for me to have their input in that way, which has been great. Um, <clears throat> some, um, <clears throat> thank you, I just want to thank, I've got, there's quite a few of my colleagues here tonight from Third Eye, and I just want to thank you guys for putting up with me with the journey, because you've probably heard book, the word book, like, so often in my sentences that you're probably sick to death of it, but I just, um, I just want to thank you so much, because you've been a great encouragement during that time, which was fantastic, and Hazel Phillips, which some of you guys will know, she wrote a, she wrote a, a great, Book about the New Zealand advertising industry called Sell. It's a really good um, capture of our history. Um, but when I first decided to write a book, I phoned her and I said, I said, hey, so tell me, is it going to be worth it? She said, uh, she actually told me a number of things, which I won't repeat, but um, <laughs> one of the things she said is it will take longer than what you think it will take, and boy, was she right. So um, thank you for putting up with me for much longer than what I thought. Um, thanks to Beavery for hosting us here tonight. I think it's a great venue, and um, you know, just, uh, I've been to a number of events here, and I think it's fantastic. So, great team, uh, which is awesome. Thanks to Eden Catering for catering the event tonight. Thank you so much for that, which is brilliant. Um, the cupcakes that are just there are from Petal, and they are really delicious. So, please, uh, please eat those later. Um, just watch out because the blue gets on your fingers, so you'll need that. And thank you very much to some very important friends who have helped me out tonight, uh, which is um, Ginny that's doing all the photography over there, thank you so much. We've got Christine and Lindsay and Trace and Tina. I think I've got everybody. I'm coming back to Cy who's not going to um, So yeah, thank you so, so much guys for that, which is great. Now, I want to honor some specific people that have um, been a real, um, been very, very special throughout this, this process for me and uh, the main one is standing right over there in the white shirt, which is my husband's side. Um, literally, I'm not sure how much of me he's seen in the last two years, but I do exist. Just don't tell him I've got about another three or four books sitting in my brain. I don't think he really wants to play that at, that time, at this time. But like Simon is my best friend, he's my um, business partner, if you like to put it that way, and he's my voice of reason, so um, great sound of all, I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I want to honour my mother, Pam, um, she's passed away many years ago, but what she taught me, which, um, <clears throat> there, there were plenty of times along this book journey where I could have given up, it was a, it was a massive task, it really, it took longer, it was harder, um, <clears throat> I didn't know if it was going to be successful, I couldn't see the end, but what my mother taught me was that um, she was a great encourager, right, and she went through a lot of adversity in her life, and she, I didn't really get that because of her optimism and her encouragement, and that is really what I think helped to pull me through those, you know, the, the dips that you go through when you go on those kind of journeys, um, so that was pretty cool, and I think I got my determination to push through from her, which was awesome. Um, Andy, who's walking out the door. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> so Andy Sib, who's there still, um, is uh, the managing director of Third Eye, where I work. And you know, seriously, um, if Mum couldn't be here to encourage me, Andy is. So really, I thank you for that, and that's been really important. What important during um, that journey? So thank you so much. Um, Rachel, who's awesomely wearing the same colour top as my book, how did she know? <laughs> Rachel Connor's here. One of the reasons why I got the passion for being an account manager is Rachel. 
So, and I know she's very humble, but 22 years ago I met Rachel and she was my account manager at a printing company. And the only reason I stayed with that printing company, because I could have I could have gone anywhere else. Printing companies are a dime a dozen, right? The only reason I stayed at that printing company was Rachel. And that to me is a testament to how important an account manager was. And when I started out working with clients, literally Rachel was my role model. But if I could be as good as Rachel, I'd be happy. So thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate it. And I'm very, very honored that you could be here tonight, which is very cool. Um, Mark is there, who you have. Um, two, but Mark alluded to it two years ago, and I'll talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit more about the frustrations that led up to the conversation. But two years ago, I literally I went to Mark and I was like, I had things scribbled out on a piece of paper, and it was like a brain dump of ideas. And I was like, you know, kind of, I can't remember my words, but it was like, Mark, tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me if, there, if there's a, like a any kernel of goodness in this. And I just really appreciate that. That was a great sounding board for me at the time. So I appreciate that. And um, Mark also introduced me to Jane from AUT, who's standing here. Um, and that was great, and that was a testament to no conversation wasted. Take every opportunity you can, because you don't know where conversations are going to lead. Um, and Jane and Paul are uh, two of the management team at AUT that lead our young people through the tertiary institutions and out into the industry. And so, you know, these guys have got a great responsibility, and it was really um, great. So I want to honour you guys for what you're doing and your passion yeah, your passion, Jane, for um, nurturing these young folk. Marlene Smith from the Commerce Council is another that has a really strong drive to get these young ones and bring them up and shoot them out into the industry in the best way possible. So thank you so much. Marlene couldn't be here. She's in Dunedin uh, tonight, but that's um, really cool. Um, yeah, and then and then you'll notice if you go through the book, uh, Fleur Head from YNR, and now in Wellington, and she is in Wellington at the moment, I wrote the foreword for the book. So along the way, a couple of people really resonated um, when I interviewed them. One was Fleur, and one was um, Paul Wilson at Sarchi's. Again, just that, just the heart for their team and the heart for the, and you know it when you talk to people, you can catch the passion, but Fleur's one of those. So, um, but unfortunately she couldn't be here tonight, nor could Mike Lama from Chemistry, I don't think he's in one. Um, again, another one that's really helped me along the way and just been my, again, another sounding board as I've gone along, great advice. Um, you might be wondering where the book title came from. So that was another interview that I did with a chap by the name of Richard Goodrich in um, Australia. He's with a company called Apre. Um, and when I interviewed him, he said, this was his quote, so I'll just read it. He said, I always explain to agency account managers that controlling clients and other agency people, especially creative, is a bit like wrestling an octopus. You manage to get five tentacles under control and then the other three start whacking you around the head. <laughs> when I say that to people who are in account management, they love and love and love. People, other people go, huh, oh, what is that? But we know, account managers know that's so, so true. And I said, Richard, can I use that for my book title? He goes, yeah, it's yours. So um, that's, that's where it is. I'd love to take the credit myself, but um, and then lastly, I want to uh, just say thanks to Emma Watson, the actress from uh, Harry Potter, <laughs> who couldn't be with us tonight. Um, but she, she stood up in front of the United Nations back in 2014, and it was part of the He for She equality, um, equality movement. Um, but she said these words as part of her speech, which just stuck in my brain um, for the for the few months until I decided to write the book. And she said, if not me, who? If not now, when? And I kind of think we all go th probably go through those stages in our careers where, or lives where we have a, that kernel of imposter syndrome. You know, who am I? Who was I to write that book, really? You know, but when I look around and thought, no one else is doing it. So if they're not doing it, if not me, who? And if not now, when? So I always sort of kept that in the back of the book. And back in my mind. So, so the story of the book, um, or and where my career came from. I won't, I won't um, bore you with all the details of my career. But just to say that, like when I was, and, and a lot of this is in the book as well. When I was seventeen, I sincerely, truly, desperately wanted to be a zookeeper. 
<laughs> Obviously didn't quite get there, did I? Um, and there were, they had a rule at the time that you couldn't become a zookeeper until you were 21. So I was like, well, I lucked out there. What am I going to do for four years? And I thought, okay, well, I could do the course that leads me towards being a zookeeper. So I started down the track of sciences, which I enjoyed. And then I got about six months into this tertiary um, science course, and I went, Jesus, I can't see myself being in a lab for the rest of my life. This is going to drive me crazy. So I left there, went back to my high school, sat with the careers counsellor and bawled my eyes out, going, I don't know what to do with my life. And this was back in the 90s, this was the early 90s, where, you know, technology really hadn't even moved anywhere. I got a, um, <clears throat> and I just said, oh, look, I like art. Show me what there is to do with art and photography. And I ended up doing a photo and photography apprenticeship, which was, um, you guys probably don't even know what that was. That is graphic design before computers came in, which is really embarrassing. But when computers did come in, I was able to retrain, and <clears throat> uh, from that became a graphic designer. Owned my own design business for about 10 years. Uh, went overseas with Simon, did some voluntary work in the Middle East for a while, came back, and went full time into account management within agencies. So it was quite a, um, it was a good journey. But what I realised over that sort of time, and talking about other people, um, Account management has been termed an accidental profession. It's like you don't grow up wanting to be an account manager when you, you know, you get older. Um, people tend to fall into it one way or the other, and I certainly fell into it along the way. I was doing it anyway with my business, but then I kind of, I didn't know that there was an account manager role out in agencies, you know, that was um, not what I was aware of. And, and that's the same story for lots of other people. They'll fall into it from doing other, you know, ir irrelevant or unrelated tertiary courses, they'll fall into it from law or engineering even, totally different, or they might have just had someone, a friend that says, oh, it's cool, working in an agency's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, so very, yeah, very few people sort of dream of doing it. And so because it is, um, because it is an unregulated profession, um, and it's not a formal profession, although tertiaries are offering courses related to that now. It's still, you don't have to have a membership or a license or anything to be an account manager. And because of that, um, there's very, very few support systems around, right? There's very few training courses or workshops or anything. Because they don't have to, they don't have to meet any qualification standards, right? And it's not just in New Zealand, this is a worldwide thing. What we're experiencing here is just the tip of the international iceberg and we're all singing from the same sort of songbook. And as I was going through my career, when I had my business, and certainly when I went out and worked in agencies, I had this growing level of frustration. Um, I couldn't find resources or training material and I was really at the mercy of Whoever I was working with that could train me, anyone that was senior that could train me, my colleagues that could train me, and that didn't really happen. You know, the, the reality is everyone's working so hard, it doesn't often happen. And if you happen to be in an agency where you do have that kind of um, <clears throat> formalised training structure, awesome, but you're in the minority, as far as I'm aware, and I've talked to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> so, because I was getting more, frust more and more sort of frustrated, and I was my way of learning was asking a million questions and hoping that I was asking the right questions. And I know that was what you don't know, you don't know. Um, and I was learning by mistakes. So we're reinventing, and agencies were reinventing the wheel over and over and over because we don't know any better, right? Um, so in 2014, I set up a website, um, am-insider.com, which was specifically, this was, this was to start to train and equip and encourage account managers. So it really it was, um, it, it held resources on the sites of Microsoft Word and Excel templates, and every week to two weeks I was blogging and contributing an article for that site. So between 2014 and 2016, I was writing constantly. Then in 2015, I joined Third Eye. So I came out of agency, 25 years in agency, or working with clients, Went into Third Eye, which is a recruitment company for those who don't know. We specialise in recruiting for the industry. So we're very niche, but we're able to take that kind of top level view of the industry and talk to a lot of agencies and a lot of um, account managers. And the more I spoke to people, the more 
I spoke to candidates and heard their pain and heard their stories and things, and I'm going, Germany crackers, this is bigger than me, this is, this is big. Okay, and not only was I talking to people here, we're talking to people overseas, and over this time I've talked to people in nearly, I think I was counting up, it's definitely over 20 countries since I've been at Third Eye. Um, and to hear these sort of stories, I started to get more and more and more frustrated. And that's when I went to speak to Mark in 2016. And it was like going, okay, I've got to do something. And I just kind of, I think I said to Andy, I spoke to him one day, where it was like, don't do something, I'm going to explode. You know, it was like, I, I, yeah, it was just that drive. And I was out walking the dog one morning, very early hours, and I had what I call an epiphany, because I like that word. And I thought, I'm going to write a book. It was just it, and I'm kind of, uh, Simon will attest to this, once I get an idea or a project in my mind, I just do it. I don't really, I don't count the cost, I don't think where this could go, it's just like, this sounds like a really good idea and there's a solid rationale behind it, I'm just going to do it. Um, so that's what I did, and I started writing the book, and I had no idea where that journey was going to lead, and I certainly didn't think it was going to lead to that, which is way bigger than I ever thought, and way harder than I thought. I mean, I was... We were in Fiji at the beginning of this year and I was editing the darn book on the beach in Fiji. You know, this is how I sort of, it's been all consuming uh, exercise. But along, especially in those early stages, I remembered Emma Watson's quote and I thought, right, I can do this and I'm going to do this. And even though I might be a nobody in the industry, I'm going to do it and we'll just see where we, where we get to. And I felt, I felt like I had reached the stage in my career after 25 years that I had enough career experience and life experience and people experience that I could do this. I, if, we, if I'd looked at it five, ten years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been ready, but like now is a good time. Um, <clears throat> but as I've written in the book, that, that type of book can't be written by one brain alone. It just can't. A lot of it's my experiences, but to, to get it to where it is, I sat down with a number of heads of agencies, heads of client service, account managers, um, I interviewed them extensively right across our industry, advertising, design, PR, experiential, digital, media, just to try and get that understanding of the breadth, and especially the areas that I hadn't had direct experience myself. And some of those interviewees are here, Luke and Jane, and it's been just you know, wonderful to see, have you guys here at the end of the journey as well as the beginning, which is good. Um, and through all of those conversations, I was able to distill a number of what I'm calling key insights that came out of that. Um, one of those, one of the insights was that account managers, oh, and, and as part of that interviewing process, I uh, talked to people uh, from 30 different countries. So it was an intentional interviews right across the world to try and get that kind of breadth as to what was going on there. Um, so one of the insights was that account managers are greatly influenced by the marketplaces in which they operate, which is obvious, you know, there's cultures, um, ethnic, uh, uh, nuances of the countries and the markets in which they're working in and that kind of thing. That's, that's what makes the differences between us. And then the similarities, um, or no, not similarities, the um, second insight was that every agency owner or manager has a different idea of what an account manager should be and what their role is. So there's no standardisation and that type of um, opinion um, will stem from their own experiences, you know, so it could be it could be so vastly different. And one of those, I'll give you an example of where I noticed one of those big differences was when I started to talk to um, agency owners about sales and I would ask the question, do you see your account managers as salespeople? Boy, did that open up um, an interesting conversation. And, I, I, and it came into what I called a sales spectrum. Because I went into that book, I seriously went into that book going, all account managers are salespeople. Because that was my experience. I'd come out of agencies where we were known as the sales team. And um, so I thought, oh, all account managers are salespeople. And yet I would talk to this whole spectrum where all account managers are salespeople, right through to we don't show our, our account managers any financials whatsoever. They're just relationship holders, and then everything in between. So you know you can sort of see that there's there's a lot of discrepancy about what account management is, which makes it also very difficult to define. Um, but that's okay. That's, that's a, a, a challenge we can overcome. Um, <clears throat> 
but then many, many of the aspects of, of account management are the same across the world, or very, very similar. And this was another insight, was just to say, the, the work, the channels, the technical requirements, systems and processes, working with clients, uh, uh, workplace frustrations, working with colleagues, it's the same. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're from, it's the same. Um, so that was, that was quite exciting to sort of hear that. Um, and then as what Mark alluded to just before, account managers have a considerable amount of influence both over their clients and over um, their agencies. So it's, it's a position that I think has been very under... Uh, I was going to say undermined, that's the wrong word. Definitely underappreciated in the industry um, based on um, the level at which an account manager can direct a client or, or advise and direct uh, a client's expenditure. They can, um, they have their client's attention, uh, they can change their thoughts and opinions and recommendations depending on the, the relationship level. That's powerful, that's absolutely powerful. And similarly, I'm of the firm, firm opinion that an account manager can make or break the su success of their agency. And if an agency understands that and they put the time to train and equip their account managers, they can make their agency so much stronger. And unfortunately, we've gone through a piece of um, history, a period of history, where account managers have more colloquially been known as bag carriers, or just the paper pushers, the administrators, that kind of thing. But if they were truly equipped and respected and uh, empowered to do their job, I fully, fully believe that they could increase an agency's revenue and profit. But that's got to start by an intentional change within the industry, and that's where I hope that this book can come, uh, you know, come into its um, into its own. And I, uh, on that, on the table, there's a, a, a sheet that I've created that's like some sort of like ten tips for training your team, and it's how you can use that book to, you know, to, to, to go back and. Um, try and empower and train your account management team. So it's definitely just take one, it's, um, it's well worth it. Um, <clears throat> for the length of the book, I literally did not stop writing that. I didn't have a predetermined length in mind, I just stopped writing it when I felt I'd written everything. And again, if it was something, please, please let me know. I've already found one, it was, um, I was reading an article the other day, it was called, um, I was talking, we, you know about in, in, um, in app advertising, in video advertising, but there was in, in picture advertising, I was kind of, what? I haven't heard it. Damn, it's not on the book. Um, edition number two. So yeah, so, so the book, the, the, market, the market for that book is really threefold. Firstly, it's for individual account managers who want to take responsibility for their own training. Um, because let's face it, some agencies that they're in, they will not get training. It's just not going to happen. So account managers have to take, be proactive and do that themselves. So it's for it's targeting the individuals. Um, it's for um, agency management to train their teams. So it's definitely um, the market is for agencies. Um, and I really, I think that's the biggest opportunity there, it really is, because then that way you can actually change the culture and the outcomes of agencies as well. Because one, one account manager alone is great, but you bring the whole team together on the same songbook, man, you've got, you've got some strength. Um, and the other is tertiary institutions. You know, start, start at the beginning, before they get into the industry, train them up a little bit, see how that happens the world, you know. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I've, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting book. It's been a, it's been a long journey. I just think it's, um, <laughs> I actually, when I was, when I was prepping this, I was going, how do I sum this up in one speech? Seriously, how do, how do I do it? I don't know. But I just want, again, I just want to sort of thank you guys all for coming out. You've been a massive support throughout the whole, um, the whole journey. I, Hope you'll get in behind it. You know, I think it's really worth it. I really think it will help all your all your businesses. Um, the book, obviously, the book can be purchased tonight, but it's also available on my website, inside, and hyphen insider.com and Amazon. So it's on, on all that one. Um, but yeah, thanks again so much. So I'll if I, and I find signing books really weird, but I kind of been told I have to. Um, 
if you would like me to sign a book, I'll be here afterwards to do that for you. Um, but there's uh, sort of um, this more sweet food, I think, coming out. And look, thanks again. And I really appreciate it. But you're all awesome. So. Thank you.